SpaceX's plan is to send 10,000 Starlink satellites to space to beam the internet all around the world. A lot has been done in that direction already, however none of it would have been possible without the incredible software that runs the Starlink. What exactly is it, how was it built, and who built what? Well, we'll find out in just a second, but before that please subscribe to Futurefile to watch more fascinating videos on futuristic tech. All of SpaceX's projects make heavy use of software tools and coding, including the rockets. The rockets are tracked and run by computerized systems that are important in regulating things like fuel temperature, pressure and so on. Spacecraft designs such as the Crew Dragon and Starship feature even more software encoding. SpaceX's engineering teams continually test the code to ensure that the rockets and the spacecraft all work correctly. They have even developed ERP systems for every stage of building their rockets for maximum achievable accuracy. Software is heavily involved from raw materials exchange, work order assignment, procedure building and the launch plan. Reliability is one of the biggest concerns that leads SpaceX to utilize software so much. Machine automation can avoid mistakes that humans may end up making. Thus, SpaceX has under its employment a large cast of skilled and talented computer programmers, whose job it is is to build from scratch some of the most important components of SpaceX products. The fate of the company itself, along with precious materials of SpaceX's business partners and contractors, are placed upon the shoulders of the programming team on a daily basis. A big chunk of the programming team are formal university graduates in the computer science discipline, but there are also many employees who are directly taken in without consideration of their degrees because of their exemplary skills in programming and software development. It is in line with Elon Musk's demand for practically skilled people who are able to work under SpaceX's fast-paced routines for research, development and prototyping. So it would make natural sense for Starlink to be the SpaceX product which is the most software intensive. According to Steve Sipanlu, who is currently a software engineering manager at SpaceX, all of their early projects used well-established methodologies and languages that anyone interested in the field as a student will be familiar with. AngularJS, c -sharp, and MSSQL slash SQL were all used for their projects. Over the years as SpaceX sought to drastically increase their technological level of their efforts, the software engineers turned to new methods and advanced programming languages in order to help them develop precisely what they needed. Some of these have not been revealed publicly though, probably because they are trade secrets. However, it is known that the team is preparing to move away from well-known SQL in favour of a lesser known development of SQL, known as Postgre SQL. If you remember, SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it is used for database development and management and a stronger version of that language will help the programming team better manage Starlink's thousands of satellites and eventually tens of millions of its future users. Each Starlink unit is composed of multiple systems working together and these include the satellite itself, ground receivers, Wi-Fi and so on. All of these systems require updates from SpaceX to function properly and reliably. SpaceX's software for Starlink is designed with this in mind, including the option of further systems in a household connected to the Starlink service. The software regularly performs automatically scheduled updates provided that the systems are kept on. Speed was a concern as they noticed that despite automation, people all around the world would experience slowdowns as coverage is spread worldwide. In order to make updating easier, an update would first be sent to one central server in a particular region, and from that server, surrounding users will be able to get their updates quickly. SpaceX plans to eventually construct more and more of these servers as subscriber counts rise. The possibility of faulty updates is also accounted for, and the last decent working version of the software is kept in a backup for use later on. Starlink boasts a very intricate and complex telemetry system. A telemetry system is a method of data transmission from an origin point to numerous data points. In case of Starlink's operation, it would be the satellites and the ground receivers owned by every user. This is where SpaceX's biggest challenge arose, as they had to find a way to successfully concentrate satellite beams onto every spot of the Earth that they want to serve, and account for radio interference from other satellites, including other Starlink satellites. This issue was evident during the beta and alpha testing stages of the Starlink when many users reported dodgy internet signals. The software development team was able to solve further issues with the telemetry system, being unable to properly track moving users. It also needs to automatically determine the amount of bandwidth needed for a particular user or, on the macro level, amount of bandwidth needed in a particular region. Machine learning and artificial intelligence has been used to make the proper automation of this process possible in a way that is accurate and functional. Tesla's in-house telemetry system that was used for Tesla vehicles was robust and advanced, but it was deemed not suitable for Starlink due to how it operated. 
the in-house system operated on the basis of fixed points feeding data to other fixed points. This would not work for Starlink as Starlink had to work with many devices that were always on and the satellites rotate in providing internet service to data points that are also often either moving or fluctuating from an on or off state. Another problem faced by the software engineers is regarding fault tolerance. The idea is to limit the effects of a data glitch or unusual activity to a small subset of the software code, which in layman's terms would mean as little interruptions as possible for the end users. Upon the full launch of Starlink satellite fleet, all satellites will be flying in different orbit levels at an average speed of 4 miles per second. Any user will not be connected to the same satellite for greater than a few minutes, and each device can only communicate with one satellite at a time. The software suite makes use of the satellite's electrically steered laser beams to instantaneously change from satellite to satellite without any gaps. A traffic buffer mechanic handled by SpaceX servers were also added by the software engineers in order to virtually eliminate internet latency. The sensitivity of all the systems employed by Starlink demand the highest level of accuracy and diligence from SpaceX's software developer. Anyone with experience in building software will know that the occasional bug or malfunctioning code finds its way into any sort of code. These bugs, however, stand ready to cost SpaceX millions upon millions or even lead to significant material damage, injury and death if one of these bugs leads to satellite losing their altitude and rapidly falling to the Earth. Keep in mind that the plan is to put more than 10,000 satellites into space for internet service. Other SpaceX engineering teams may have the option to have their efforts result in testing failures as SpaceX will still be gaining important information from the failures to make the next test a success. The software coding team, however, does not. According to them, a different mentality is needed to work on the Starlink project as a programmer. As a programmer here, you are required to know exactly how your code will work and with diligence to avoid any possibility of a bug. You will also need to know exactly how the code will work in different scenarios and different uses. Due to this, the testing process is the most intense in this sector of SpaceX's development projects. Programmers are still building the software and making updates in small batches that make small changes. These small changes themselves are all tested extensively to eliminate all probability of malfunction, and then further tests are conducted with the entire software working with these changes. Certainly a very exhaustive process, isn't it? This lines up with the way the telemetry system is set up as it keeps feeding an automation utilised by the software development team to keep tabs on new information and continually monitor the way the software is expected to function. The massive confidence advantage that the software engineers receive from this is unparalleled and priceless, allowing for the best possible outcome to be ensured. Under the current setup though, engineers still face a myriad of challenges with the way they may fully test their systems in an end-to-end -end configuration. Hundreds of software services also have to be integrated together during the development process. It is also not truly possible to properly test every single component and every single capability as one would do on a to-do list. Frustrating technical limitations like this are the main reasons for the delay in the rollout of satellites for Starlink and further technological innovations in the software field can definitely ease things along. There is much more yet to be known about the software package that runs Starlink and we will indeed know more as the project slowly nears completion. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this next video on Starlink going global. That is shown in the end screen. See you there.